So let's get into a little Q&A. Marco says, make me a moderator. Ah, I wish I could. Let's see. Who wants to be a moderator? You get a moderator, and you get a moderator, and you get a moderator. Uh, you know what I'll do? Uh, I'll have my assistant come on here next next time, and we'll just start picking moderators, people that have been around here for quite a while. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Shorts are for sport, swimming and summer barbecues. Mike says, what's your take on Solana doing so well compared to ETH and Bitcoin since the latest crash? Uh, they seem to be having a much better recovery and more stable in some of the smaller dips. I don't know, Mike. It seems like uh, Solana's taken quite a hit. I can remember, wasn't Solana in like the top six? I know it was above Cardano at one point, but uh, it doesn't look to be doing so hot. There's been a couple of days where it's increased by 10%, and that's great. But uh, the other thing you have to take a look at deeply is those lockup periods, which we talk a lot about. So you can find that on Masari. And the lockup periods for Solana are ever coming up. So uh, we'll see how that works out. But I don't know. Um, speaking of Solana and Sam Bakeman fried that's kind of like his pick. And that's who he's kind of getting behind. So if you think that's going to be the next big thing, then you should invest into it. But uh, it's not financial advice. I am very weary about it. Things in beta for I don't know how long and keeps going down. And I know when people will say, ah, but it's just in beta and it's okay. I'm like, there's some other chains that never went down. I mean, Bitcoin seems to truck right along. <laughs> Tiny says, I will ban everyone. That's pretty awful. That's pretty awesome. What do you think about Voyager being bailed? So the thing is, like, I don't know if you've ever who here who's ever run a company, but it all comes down to liquidity. And uh, you could have a great company and you could have a great idea and you have great marketing, great people, but sometimes you need that, that liquidity base to get the money to do the things you actually need to do to grow your business or to shore it up in times of hardship. So what Voyager did with, with Alameda, I thought was a great move. And if you are looking for stability, you need liquidity. And that liquidity came from Alameda Research. So I applaud their decision. I thought it was great. And these are the things that I look for. Again, I invest in people. And I like the fact that uh, Steve Ehrlich's on the helm and uh, he's done a, a, did a pretty good job with E-Trade, uh, making that into almost, I think, a billion dollar company. And then uh, Lightspeed. And then also now here we are with Voyager. So seems to be okay. <laughs> here comes the pain. Yeah, I don't know. Like today is a good day and then tomorrow could be the exact opposite. It could just, you know, dump again to me personally like i said like i know people ask me to like robbie seemed to be pretty calm even though we just dropped you know we just lost two trillion dollars in the market cap well it's because i mean in all honesty i mean these are the times that we all get filthy rich unfortunately is during these bear markets and if you can just stick around for a while it's just like the army you just it's not like it doesn't take a lot of brain power you just got to show up with the right uniform and just keep coming. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's pretty much investing 101. <laughs> Moderator is too much responsibility. Not really. Oof, another problem. Hey, Dan, do you think Bancor's uh, ill protection was a Ponzi? Good question. I'll take a look. Uh, perp, I don't know what that is. You ever thought about creating your own DAP? Sure. I don't know what I would do with it, though. The real dump coming. I sure hope so. You know, this is from Cybergenic. The China bank runs and, and, and construction bailouts going to hit global markets. I don't know, but a uh, guy over at Coin Bureau did a great, did a great video on uh, the fudging of numbers of GDP and uh, the growth of the Chinese economy. And he, and, he took a, and he took a look, he goes, look, he goes, there's an incentive for all these different provinces to say that they're actually producing more goods and services much more than they, than they actually are so they can get all, these, all, all this money from the centralized banks and the organizations and, and the government. He says, but the problem is, is that, and they've already shown it, that there's been issues where they just inflate these numbers. And I'm like, hmm, 
that's kind of funny because like, <clears throat> if I think about it, I don't trust uh, a lot of things out of China, especially the news. So I'm like, how, why did I trust the, the, these, these GDP numbers? But maybe I'm wrong. Eh, let's see. And then Myra says, if Alex disclosed what they're going to do, people will front run and try to liquidate them. I don't know. You know, there was a hack with Bitfinex. I don't remember that. It was years ago. I don't remember it, but uh, it was a while ago. And Simon Dixon was a part of that to help restructure and uh, worked out pretty well. And it was a pretty, pretty good idea with the security token. It was risky for the investors, but worked out pretty well for them. I don't trust government. Neither does do most. Uh, question, how hard is it to use a ledger for a beginner? It's just, you know, it's just like everything. It's like when the internet came around, people were like, how do you do an email? If someone showed you how to do an email, you're like, that's easy. And then, uh, or like someone showed you how to get uh, on Telegram. Oh, that's pretty easy. Or, or whatever else. Or how to buy crypto. And just, and before you know it, you're like, well, that, that seems very simple. Ledgers are, are not too hard. It's just the concepts behind them, I think, sometimes. If you're looking for a place to figure that out, uh, just go to Dan Teaches Crypto. And it's a free website. Made it free. It's always will be free. And uh, just look at chapter two. It's all about Ledger and how to use it. It's called safety. Oh, I like that. Sean says, everyone, even non-crypto news is saying crypto is dead. Don't think it's there. The bottom is mostly likely in because of that. Let's hope. So. I mean, if it is, it is. I could use a couple more weeks of uh, people dumping. That way I can pick it up for cheap. It's just on sale. Now, do I say to, I'm not here to say, buy the dip and buy the dip and buy the dip. I'm just saying like me, I just have been trucking along dollar cost averaging. And when there's big events coming up, like with the CPI numbers in July 13th, and then the Fed meeting a week after that, uh, I will probably uh, ease up on my dollar cost averaging, wait for those numbers to come out, and then react uh, appropriately. If the, the CPI numbers are high, that means inflation isn't under control, the market will tank, and I'll take all those, those dollar cost average dates. Like, let's just say, for example, I buy 100 bucks of Bitcoin a day. So what I would do is just save it up for a week, and uh, as soon as the market dumps, I would just take 700 bucks and put it on to where I think might be a low point. Am I gonna hit that low point perfectly? No, but uh, these are the things I do. So I dollar cost average coupled in with value cost averaging. Hope that makes sense. Uh, is Exodus wallet safe? I hear it, I never used it, maybe. Uh, can you can still recover if you lost your hard device. Yes, and speaking of which, I did this uh, here. I left, I left my ledger uh, in Puerto Rico, my other one, I got a bunch of them. And um, I, I, I do that because I'm paranoid. And I, I just play them all different places. And uh, I was like, ah, shoot. I left it over there. And for my ledger live, I was like, well, I don't have this one. So I just ordered another one. I had my mnemonic phrase with me. I just put in those 24 words and voila, back in action. So yeah. What do you think about insane clown posse? I haven't. Heard them in a while. No, uh, Internet Computer Protocol or something like that. I think it's ahead of its time. And if it's, if it's up, that's great. I don't invest into it, though. And again, not because I think it's awful. Just it may be awesome. I just haven't looked deep enough into it. Uh, hey, Rob, have you looked at any many commercial real estate being vacant? Yes, there's a lot of it. And think this is different than 2008, where it's mostly institutions, bank, taking the harder hit and not much in retail. So there's another, another reason for uh, commercial real estate being vacant is because if you take a look at some commercial real estate, it's just take a look at malls or just take a look at businesses themselves. And in this day and age, I wouldn't want to, to work at a centralized location where I have to bring in all my employees and then pay for the overhead and the electricity and any kind of insurance or whatever else I got to do, and then bring everybody there and force them to pay uh, super high gas so they can come in there and we can go to and talk in stupid meetings and things like that. I just say, hey, if I had the uh, ability, I would say, we can work remotely. And that's it. And remotely works, people didn't like it uh, before coronavirus. And then some people realized, hey, this works out pretty well. And I think that's uh, part of the reasons why you see a lot of commercial real estate vacant. We just got to figure out exactly what we can do with that. And that's the bigger thing. 
Yeah. Well, Neil says, just call it weighted DCA. You can call it weighted DCA, but that, that also involves like you continue on with the DCA and then like, let's say you buy a hundred, hundred on Monday, hundred on Tuesday, hundred on Wednesday. And then the uh, CPI numbers come out on Thursday. They come out and the, and the market tanks and you're buying 150 or 200 or 300 or whatever it is. I'm just saying when these big events happen, just for me, I've just tried this recently because don't listen to me, you know, uh, where, where are we? Let me show you. See this thing underneath here, the rules where it says hundred percent scams. Uh, assume that everything's a scam. Assume that everybody's wrong and do your own research because uh, you'll be happier that way. So like, I'm just doing this part right here. Uh, dollar cost averaging or, and then waiting. And then on the, on the days where I think there's going to be some big, huge news, I just wait and it worked out last month or is it this month? No. Yeah. Just uh, the CPI numbers that came out a couple of weeks ago it worked out really well because the CPI numbers, I thought I'm like, there's no way inflation's under control. And it wasn't CPI numbers came out a little bit of a dump dropped all my, my cash in there. And, and that was it. And then, uh, well, not all, I actually just dropped a couple of hundred because then I thought, well, the meeting's going to come up with Jerome Powell. And then that's when we went from like 22 to 20 to 19 and 18. I was like, well, this is a pretty good time to, to put in. And that's it. Could it go down to 10 K? Sure. Exactly. Don't listen to me. Just some guy in a pool. <sighs> yeah. Real estate's looking bad. And that's okay because it's overvalued. <laughs> so this is a good one. Jay Wong Chow. Is it wrong that I put my best educational guess of, of going all in, sell on certain low price? So like buy heavy when Bitcoin at 12K and then sell at 120K instead of DC? Sure. I mean, if it works out for you. It's like a friend of the show, Diddy from uh, the Bitcoin family. You know that guy? That's the guy that sold everything in 2017. He sold his, uh, his businesses, his houses, his, his cars, everything. And he put it all on Bitcoin when Bitcoin was a thousand bucks. I got to tell you, some people get great with the timing. However, there's a flip side and that flip side is most of you right now. So most of you got it in 2021 or so, and you bought at 50, 60, 69 K. Is that a smart move? Maybe, maybe in like five years when Bitcoin is at X amount of dollars, you're like, I remember when I could buy Bitcoin below 100K. It just depends on timing. That's really what it is. And the really, the, the, the bigger thing is this, is that even Diddy who did that back in 2017, you have to understand that he was investing and he got out of it in 2013 and 2014. That's what people don't remember about Diddy. Because I, I remember that because he told me personally on the show. And he goes, I was into mining. I got into, uh, into Bitcoin. I put a pretty heavy in, but I got nervous, especially when it started to crash and I got out. He goes, but I knew it would come back again. And in 2017, that's when I went heavy because see, Diddy had the mentality. He's like, I don't care if it goes down and it might go down. I'll be okay. And that's the big difference. Everybody has the brain power to do the investing. The question is, do you have the stomach? Can you stomach it for three, five, 10 years? Ah. <laughs> ah, crypto Esquire. I bought in July 31K and sold at 60K. It's all timing. If everybody could be like you. What? Dirty's here. Gensler is suppressing the likes in the channel. No, Beardy. Uh, Gensler is a moderator. That's the problem. I got to take that away from him. Let's see. Yes. So Myra says, Rob, did I understand correct? The other day you, you heard you say 80% of Celsius assets could be accounted for on chain wallets. This is actually what uh, me, James, and Ben were talking about after the DCA show last Friday. And James said, yeah, he goes, I took a look at the on-chain data. It looks like there's a, he said 80% is uh, on-chain. That's what he said. I need to, uh, you know what I'll do on the DCA show, which will be three days. I'll have James explain that one. Uh, do you have a specific price you personally going all in on Bitcoin and selling realistically? Uh, I'm going all in on Bitcoin when it hits a dollar. I think that's the time to go all in and then I will sell it at a uh, hundred K. I don't know. Look, uh, I did some price prediction videos in the past and they're awful because 
they give people false hope and they wait too long. And I can't have people do that anymore because I thought for sure that Bitcoin would go to 150 K. I thought for sure that they're going to go to 10 K just on the fractals from past cycles. It didn't happen. However, uh, let me show you something. Let me see. This might sound a little funny for a second. Damn it. Okay. Now I was doing for, let's see. Oh, sorry. Let me share my screen. That would probably help. So in there's a link in the description. There's a lot of links actually. Uh, let's see if you go down where it says strategies, strategies, strategies. Uh, there's one called all crypto exits. It still makes, it's still relevant. If you click on that, what I did was I just said to myself, I think this is where the market is going. Okay. By myself. And what I, what I said was, okay, I think ETH is going to 10,000. So I said at $2,000 at the selling point, because remember I've been dollar cost averaging since 2017, right? So I bought, I bought some Ethereum at a thousand. I bought some Ethereum at like a hundred bucks, but I did this for like two, you know, since 20, so 2017, it was like a hundred, 300, 400, somewhere around there. I thought, okay, 2000 bucks, I'm going to sell 20%. I did. And then when I hit 5,000, I'll sell 20%. And of course it never hit seven, nine or 10, just didn't. So that's a bummer. And then, but for Link, it did. The selling point, I because I was buying Link when it was like a buck. So I sold 20% of $26, 20% of 28, 30. Unfortunately, Rob got greedy and didn't stick to his plan like he was supposed to. And he didn't sell at 32 and 35, even though it did go to 32 and 35. And now Rob's holding chain link, so whatever. Uh, Bitcoin, I only sold it. Actually, I sold at 20,000 and then 60,000. And that worked out okay, well, 20%. All right, but you know, I'm still holding, but it's okay, I'm still holding Bitcoin, not a big deal. EOS, got rid of that junk. Sorry, sorry, I shouldn't say like that. Uh, the Cardano, that worked out pretty well. But again, Rob got greedy. So at a dollar, I sold 20, dollar 80, 20%, 220, I sold 20%, but Rob didn't sell 260 and three, which isn't bad because I like that. Theta, again, should have done it like this. Did, But yeah, I mean, you see where I'm going? These are just, these are just thought process of where I think things are going in the cycle. So again, if you think that, if you believe in these things like I do, these four-year cycles, having all-time high dip reset, da 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 2020, having all-time high dip. I think we're going through that. Then maybe a reset. And of course, the 2024, I can guarantee there's a having going on because that happens every four years for Bitcoin. And then one might see an all-time high. So that's that. Yeah. Mill Bonner. Funny. Funny how selling gets less likely to higher the price because it's just a process. You think, like I thought in when I started Dallas Cost Average in 2018 and 2019, 2020, I'm like, I can do this. I can sell. But it turns out I was way better at buying dips and buying and buying and buying and not selling. Now I'm much better at that. So <laughs> what is this? Planet, I can't read that, sorry. Uh, Rob, will it be a great reset? People are calling for it. I don't know. I don't know. And then th that's, that's really what it comes down to is like, do you want to have all your eggs in one basket or do you want to diversify? And I know some people say, like, I hate that stupid term from Warren Buffett. Uh, people who I diversify don't know what they're doing. And it's, it's nuanced to what he's talking about. It doesn't mean like you should put your, yeah, like everything on, you know, EOS. That would have been stupid. What he's, what he's really saying is that in the stock market game, because that's what he does in stock market. If you don't know exactly, you know, how to pick the right uh, companies by uh, PE ratios and, and, and taking a look at, at their track record and really doing the, uh, the deep dive that's necessary to find those undervalued ones, then you should diversify and get into uh, funds. But that doesn't mean what people tend to think, which is I'm just going to go on to crypto. That's not a good 
plan, my personal opinion. What I do is I have a little bit in crypto. I got a good amount of crypto. I got a good amount in real estate and land, good amount on uh, my businesses, online education platform, the uh, Amazon FBA and the uh, sports facility. But, and then of course, I also do things like this thing called Masterworks where I buy fractionalized share of fine art because guess what? Rich people are crazy. And they don't care that, that we're in a uh, we're going into a recession. They still want that Basquiat and that Banksy. So they'll pay ridiculous prices for it. So Masterworks, and of course, then I, long term wise, I do the I trust crypto IRA. Man, that was uh, that was a, a good amount of shilling in a short amount of time. You're welcome. So that's what's up. All right. Uh, what's this? Rob for FTB on the prior is it better to sell investments to buy a whole house? Or buy the minimum you can for a deposit, get a mortgage, and keep the rest invested. That's uh, so we're talking about real estate. I don't know if people really want to hear this one, but the big the big thing is to get in to get into real estate when you can. Do I think now is the best time? Probably not. <laughs> now is probably not the best time. If I was, if it was me, if it was me, and this is my first property, I'd wait. I'd wait for the prices to go down. The problem is that with the prices will go down, but then the interest rates will go up. And that's, that's the problem. So what you really want to do is go, okay, do I want to set, do I want to get in this level of like on, on average U S uh, single family home is costing around $400,000. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. $400,000. And you're going to get into a uh, uh, mortgage of like 6.25% or something like that. So that's going to give you uh, a, a payment of around, even if you put 20% down $1,800, $1,900, something like that. So you can do that. Or you're going to say, you know what? I'm just going to wait. I'm going to allow the prices to, to collapse. Like I know they will. I know the interest rate will be high, but I'll get into that and then I'll refinance in three to, three to four years. That's what I would do. I hope that made sense. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Start from the ground up. <laughs> Melina, you just came in. What do you think about FTX in the sales suit? Is FTX JP Morgan like Simon says? Potentially. Potentially. I can tell you though, Actually, I can't tell you what I what I truly think. I don't want to get sued. But I just think people are picking winners because maybe they're a little ticked off about what happened uh, beforehand. And that's it. That's all I can say. Uh, Rob, do you have an good strategy for every coin? I didn't, but I sold a lot of those worthless coins a long time ago. Not a long time ago, but a, a while ago. There was a video we did. It was called uh, Sell a Man, Go Away. Uh, if you just Google digital asset news, sell them, they go away. I think we did in April actually. And uh, it made a compelling case to sell the things that you think you should sell uh, early than just go through the brutal summer months of May, June, July, August, September, and then just kind of come back in or layer in around October. That's just, uh, it's just an old adage from Wall Street. And we took a look at uh, how right it's been over the last 50 years. Oh, this is the thing. Michael says, love your attitude. Funny how people need to think they're smarter. Thank you for sharing your opinions. See, this is the difference between me and a lot of people. I know I'm not that smart. So because I know that, what I do is I just put the rules in place and it helps me out uh, tremendously. Uh, so like these one, I say, it's all gone, meaning never invest more than I'm afraid to lose. And I just assume that all the money I put in is already gone. That way I don't uh, get all butt hurt when everything gets rug pulled. That's it. hundred percent are scams. Everything's a scam. If you treat it like everything's a scam, you'll be a lot happier. Even if your mom texts you and she wants your Coinbase code, probably a scam. No exchanges. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. Try to take as much as you possibly can off exchanges. Don't leave many. I don't do a great job of this, but it uh, helps out. Now we still got to use exchanges to buy things and sell things, right? But, uh, you know, to, to, to leave, you know, your life savings on, a, on, a, on an exchange is a recipe for disaster. No leverage, period. There is one, there is one Charlie Munger phrase, uh, Warren Buffett's right-hand man, where he says there's the, uh, the three L's that re leads to ruination uh, for men. Uh, ladies, liquor, and leverage. And uh, that's what I see personally. People always email me. And, of course, the big thing, take profit. So, again... I know I'm not that smart, so I just put rules in place to protect me. 
Yeah, that's it. And so my wife doesn't kill me. Let's see. And let's see. Rob, where's the file? Nick, I think I sent it to you. You know what I'll do? Uh, that's a long. Hold on. Let me try this. First of all, I'm going to post this comment. I don't know if that works. Can everybody see this link I just put in there? That's to my Google Docs. And that right there is where you can see those, the four-year cycle things I'm already showing, the one that looks like this. So tell me if that link came through. Sometimes YouTube doesn't allow links to come through for some reason. Uh, how Oh, this is a good one. Where to go? Ah, oh, this is great. How much Celsius pain you, bro? Well, Gookie, great question. So, where'd it go? I'm getting paid 0, 0.0 Celsius dollars or anything you want to talk about. So, in actuality, uh, 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 there's a video that I did. It was just last Sunday. Not this Sunday, but the Sunday beforehand when I got back from consensus. And you can look it up. It's called We Need a Crypto Recession. And the date was June 12th. And I put that out around 11 a.m. And I said, and on this one, on the second snippet, it starts around five minutes and 20 seconds. I go, quick thoughts on Celsius. And what I said there was, you probably should take all your money off Celsius, all your crypto and everything else. Because I think there's something going on. I don't really trust it right now. I, I talked about, is the APY worth it? Not for me. I only keep 3% on there. And I said, take it off. And uh, nine hours later, they stopped all the withdrawals. So if they were paying me, it's probably not what they want me to say. So I always love that. How much are you paying? How much are they paying you? They got to be paying you. You know, my favorite one is how much is Sweatcoin paying you? Like for the free app that you can download for free, they don't pay me nothing. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Jingong Chow, hope I said that right. What do you think of Vitalik roasting Plan B on Twitter? Plan B chart only worked till it doesn't. Does that mean the next four-year chart could be more unpredictable? So there's a two-parter there. So what do I think about Vitalik? Vitalik, what he, what he talked about on Twitter was how he said that some of these economic models aren't really the greatest for people because they give them, it gives them a false sense of hope, like things are going to, like plan B said, you know, we're going to at least 100K. And I got to agree with them. That's why I'm never going to do price predictions because it gives, I mean, it's great for views, but it does no good for people. I don't want to be that guy or be that channel. So on that regard, he's right. And when he says like, they just work till they don't. And that's true. And even Ben from Into the Cryptoverse talks about this all the time. He's like, look, he's like, look models work great until they don't. And he says, not every model uh, works and only some are useful or something like that. So when he talks about this, I thought it was spot on, actually. I know Plan B probably is not too happy and he'll probably ban Vitalik, like he bans a lot of people. But uh, yeah, sure, what else? And then the next part, does that mean that the next four-year chart could be more unpredictable, uncharted? First of all, the next four-year, like again, those the four-year cycles that we were talking about here, um, these can become invalidated quite quickly when nothing happens in the next four years. That's just the truth. You know, like, I mean, we saw this happen, one, two, three, four. Uh, we saw this happen again, 2016, 2019. We saw it happen uh, in these last two years, or three, I guess, two and a half. But that doesn't mean that this is going to definitely happen. I, I tend to think it will, because I think that, the, that what drives crypto is part of this halving when the amount of uh, Bitcoin mined reduces by half and happens every four years. Could be wrong. I thought I was, I thought it was actually invalidated in 2021 because I didn't think that 67,000 was the high. I again thought it was at least hundred K and, and I was, and even Ben will admit to this. He did the uh, uh, elongated cycle theory and he thought, well, we'll just come out here in 2022 and it'll, but that didn't work out. So right now he's the closest thing, but, do I think this could happen? I hope it will, but doesn't mean, there's no guarantees whatsoever. And again, that's why 
I'm always harping on dollar cost averaging because nobody knows. Even the top TA people out there, I don't understand it. Oh. <laughs> Wixley snipes. I'll take it a step further. All people are wrong and some are helpful. That's a good one. I gotta read. I'm gonna totally steal that one. Yeah, Kevin O'Leary thinks crypto will be the 12th sector of the S&P. Yeah, Kevin O'Leary, he's got a lot of interesting thought process, but don't sleep on that guy. That guy, uh, his WonderFi, they just are you know, moving into Canada with their, with their crypto exchanges and they're buying up these other exchanges. I think Kevin O'Leary might be the next crypto evangelist, which is crazy because not too long ago he was calling it a scam, but everybody goes to that process. Even I thought Bitcoin was a scam when I first heard about it too. And now here I am on a channel talking to you in this pool house. Crazy. <laughs> this cycle's different. It's always different, Beardy. Don't you know that? This cycle is, this cycle is different, bro. <laughs> That's sarcasm. There's this book. It's called This Time It's Different. And it takes a look at economic models for the last 300 years or 400 years. And it just goes to show that in, in, in all this uh, in the whole span of the entire book, it just shows you that really nothing's much different. It's all the same thing repeating again and again and again. Yeah, that's it. All models are wrong. Some are useful. I think that's it. Mm. Yeah, this is Layla. Robbing the east side or west side of El Paso. I'm on the east side. I'm in Mexico. I'm five minutes away from Mexico, from Juarez. Yeah, start back on my Amazon business. Amazon's a good business. It's pretty, not too hard. I'm, uh, I've been doing less and less of it though because I like to I like to center things around certain holidays, especially like Christmas. That's when you make a, the bulkier money if you really play it right, toys and stuff like that. Uh... Do you have a coin outside Bitcoin and ETH you're accumulating now? Uh, Cardano and StormX. And I'm doing StormX just because of a selfish reason. Yeah, it's those two things. And and again, it always it changes. So, so I'm accumulating uh, Cardano right now because you have to understand, just like the lead up to smart contracts, uh, there was a big uh, run-up in price. And with this Vasil hard fork, there'll probably be a run-up in price. I got to tell you, though, uh, Cardano's very, I mean, from what's happening on there, I'm impressed by how they're able to take things in stride and actually do it. And people will always tell you it's a, it's a ghost chain. It's a vaporware. And I'm like, I just don't see that. But uh, whatever else. Are you still holding Voyager? Yeah, I'm holding all the Voyager to get that. What I forgot the level. Navigator, the highest level? I still have that level because I always think like if I'm going to do some buying and some trading and some selling, I want the max benefits. So I keep that, that certain level. And also I got a nice old debit card so I can do those things too and get paid in VGX. So I haven't sold any of the VGX. That's the one thing that I probably won't ever sell because I'm going to, I'm going to use Voyager forever. I mean, as long as the, the rates are pretty good. And some people say, ah, but what about Coinbase Pro? I hate using Coinbase Pro. I hate it. It's not as simple for me. Again, not that smart. All right, look, uh, 49 minutes is a, is a, a good time to just to say goodbye. So thanks so much, everybody, for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Like this video, thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing. All things talk about are time sensitive, and that's it for today. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you in the next one. Adios.